What happens when the world gets turned on its head? We're forced to look inward, perhaps become fearful, sometimes lash out at others. While there are others in the world who don't give up hope because they believe in people. Join me, Kevin Tibbles and Amy Goldberg, for our new podcast, Believe in People, where we meet those who don't give up hope. Everyone knows two divides, right? Well, he really does in more ways than one. Jeff Dowd, that's his real name, has been leaving his mark on the world of counterculture for decades. And while he spent pretty much his whole life in the movie industry, it was the Coen brothers who decided to put him in the movies. The dude is played by Jeff Bridges in, of course, The Big Lebowski. Well, today we'll discover there is a lot more to Jeff Dowd bowling and white Russians because Jeff believes in people. Welcome to the show. Bonjour. <laughs> We're <all come> back. <laughs> well, back. Jeff, you've been working, this is really interesting, you've been working on an initiative called Our Classic Tales and Solutions that Fuel Our Imagination and Future in both interactive book and TV series. It's a concept that you've been, uh, you want to uh, help us discover why we can become more optimistic about our future. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's, I mean, in the world of film noirs and memoirs, in a certain sense, it's a kind of a doudoir, which is, uh, you know, a lot of uh, <laughs> stuff. You know, I've, been, <laughs> I've been fortunate to be in the right place at the right time or the right place at the wrong time to make it more interesting. Um, and so, it, uh, you know, there, we have a lot of classic tales going back to um, in different sections, I'll put it that way. Um, which uh, start with when I was 17, the year I was in Europe with my stepbrother and my father was there on a sabbatical. And we ended up traveling around with the Rolling Stones and the Living Theater and spending a lot of time with them. And it was quite an interesting, and being even in the studio with the Stones, but um, it was quite an interesting time to be, um, it was, you know, leading into the summer of love in England and San Francisco and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, one whole section is that year, um, you know, which includes hanging out with the likes of Allen Ginsberg and stuff like that. Um, and and then the next part has to do when we came back to the States and really has to do with the, the movements in the 60s about racism, about the Vietnam War, um, and eventually about, um, as we moved in the 70s, much more about the environment and, you know, women's liberation and other forms of stuff like that. So, um, so the notion is to do, it's, it's in one sense, it's a book, but it's also in modern times interactive. And so, um, it has lots of clips and lots of, um, chances for people to put their own stuff in if, if, uh, they have a, you know, something that they experience that might be relevant to it. Um, and then it goes on to now and modern times. And so it's, um, and, it's interactive, which allows people to, you know, solutionate too. Um, I mean, one of the things we're talking about is solutionating problems. And one of the things that makes me very optimistic is how many people are trying and groups and communities are trying on their own to solutionate, um, you know, huge challenges, whether it's, you know, climate change or, or you know, various things with the economy, um, you know, and on and on. So. Um, it allows it to be interactive and people can do that. And the fact of the matter is people have come up with solutions everywhere to all kinds of things. And, you know, so the thought is if we can share them and be interactive about it, um, it'll be, um, you know, stuff people can do themselves in their own communities. So that's you. Well, but, but bottom line, you use the word, uh, you use the word community. 
you've used the word community a couple of times. How integral, how important is community to solving our problems? Oh, it's everything at this point. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, you could solve an individual family problem, maybe a personal problem, you know, but, but most of the problems have to do with, you know, the way we interact in communities and, and, and of all kinds, whether it's an educational community or it's a business community, or, you know, et cetera. It's a cultural community. So, yeah, it's, um, I mean, that's kind of why I use that because it's, um, the way we're going to have to take on challenges together much of the time, but not necessarily in the ways that have been laid out um, by, you know, governments right now and, um, you know, or, or big business right now. Um, and, and so, you know, it's, it's going to be time for, you know, I mean, this climate change thing is, is a, is a huge, very, very, very real situation we're in. And, and if we don't continue to do things and lots and lots of more things, you know, we're going to be up Schitt's Creek without a paddle pretty soon. And we already are in a lot of places. Okay. So, so, um, but that's just one example, but it's also an example where you can make a big difference right quickly. You know, um, you know, you can, you can change, you know, your energy sources and you can change what some of those sources do when they destroy things. So, you have different sources that don't destroy things. You know? But this is one example of it. But bottom line, these are classic tales, okay? And they're great stories. And when we were in South America for your you know, you saw that movie with um, with Che Guevara and um, those guys traveling about. I don't know what continent they're on. Uh, you know, compared to what we went through, boring. And, of course, they were boring in a lot of Che, like, before it became Che, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, we have... I've lived around people who sought out adventure and sought out, you know, um, trouble and had all kinds of things. Um, and so, you know, um, a lot of it is just great tales, not necessarily just my tales, but other people's tales I was around and can appropriate and stuff like that, you know? So. You know. How, are you how are you compiling this, Jeff? How are you gathering uh, all this? I'm writing it, and I'm just about to launch, probably in September, by the way. Um, but um, when we launch our dude's dream thing, too. But um, anyhow. Um, oh, tell but, people about know, that, Jeff. I, I, I want to say, about that. Let, let's okay. tell, let's, in terms of compiling, it's, it's being written, but it's, but it's very, very uh, video music um, heavy. So it's, so it's a combination of that, look at it kind of as much as a show, as well as an interactive book. And, and, and this is this is because this is different than what you normally see. I'm not saying nobody's doing this, but but not too many people are anything like this. So, um, you know, look at it like that. The, one of the other things we're doing is this thing called Dude's Dream, and we're doing we have 22 CBD type products that we're coming out with that 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 do everything from so we got some here. Uh, I'd have to go but, you know, roll on stuff that, like deodorant, looks like deodorant that, that takes care of pain locally, to tinctures, to things that help you sleep, to, to just all kinds of um, wonderful products. And for them, and we actually have our own lab scientists and people with the company we're working with. Um, called Covalent out of, out of Las Vegas in L.A. And so we are producing this stuff. We're never going to have a supply chain problem, let's put it that way, um, in uh, producer. And so um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's rather exciting, and, um, and um, we're giving away a certain portion of the money to um, you know, various groups that might be deserving and stuff like that. So, um, but, um, but you'll hear a lot about it and I'll hopefully get you guys a couple of products that you might really like too, samples and stuff. So but how it's, does, it's, how does, uh, how does, I mean, we obviously, we have to talk a little bit about the dude part of it. How, and by the way, do you actually drink white Russians or, or what? No, 
No. <laughs> but the, answer, the, the answer is yes, there was a time we drank some white Russians. Um, Joel and Ethan used it because <laughs> it's a more interesting drink to play around than, let's say, a Budweiser. You know, you know, <laughs> Budweiser, like that. So, so um, anyhow, so, but, um, but I do smoke pot and I, and, yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. But um, my, I have an ambivalent feeling about the white Russians thing because um, I've seen, as I'm sure you guys have, um, you know, the damage alcohol has done to certain people and, and how it's damaged their lives and their families yeah. and partners. And so I don't want to be, you know, out there. And by the way, I've been offered big bucks by a couple of different liquor companies to get involved. You know, and yeah. big bucks. Um, but I don't want to, you know, get a feel like I in any way contributed to the bad things that happen when people do too much alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. And, and well, what, and, what do you think you have contributed to with nothing? The, absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, look, um, but no, through the role, through the role, through the role, yeah, you've I, come on to these other separate projects. Yeah. Well, when I, I mean, you asked me what the dude roles contributed or what I've contributed. Um, I mean, well, I'm as a result of the dude role. Yeah. Well, the, the dude role is, you know, the thing about the dude, and I asked Phil Cousino, C O U S I N E A U, who is the heir to Joseph Campbell, a guy who starts giving credit for Star Wars and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I asked, we, did, we were doing a seminar together at the SMN Institute. I asked him, I said, what's the, you know, the mythological significance of the dude? And he said, oh, he's a holy fool. And what a holy fool is, like the original St. Francis, is of someone who tells it like it is. And that's why yeah. that kind of, a lot of people appreciate the dude. Because even though he's a stoned out type, stoner type and this and that, he does tell it like it is, okay? And and that led some, some light on the darkness of our world at times, okay? And I think that's part of it. Well, the he has a, the dude has a soul. Yeah. Yeah, and and and, and uh, well, and everything you've done, Jeff, your entire life. I mean, you talk about activism, you talk about Seattle Seven, the Sundance Festival, distribute film distribution. I mean, everything you've done has a heart. Everything. You know, well, that's I find that that's what motivates me. You know, is um, pumps pumps me up, so to speak. You know, yeah. You know? huh. But do, you're not one to give advice freely on how the rest of us can do that, or are no, you? No, I give I give too much advice, probably. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I give free advice and I give consulting advice. I do all kinds of advice, but but I but it's not just from me. I I download that from other people. I come from a family of teachers. My stepfather and father were. Two of the most noted economists of the 20th century, Albert Einstein, thought my stepfather was the most noted intellectual, by the way, of the 20th century. Um, mm -hmm. And um, the the um, and so, and my sister's a teacher, my mother was a teacher. So, I come from a family of educators in a sense. So, some of that was passed on to me, even though I went non-traditional, you know, entirely, you know, obviously. <laughs> Well, you did. I accept it. I think that in many ways you sort of changed uh, the, the tradition. I mean, people, people have these festivals every year um, in, which, uh, in which they try to reenact, you know, the big parts of the Big Lebowski. But I mean, my, my takeaway from that film, as, as, as I brought up a couple of seconds ago about the fact that he has, a, you know, Bridges has a soul as he plays the role of you in that. Uh, there's an inherent sort of goodness about the dude that you can't really escape. And um, mm. I think that that's something that you sort of, that's a tradition you you carry on way beyond the role, right? Well, hopefully. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I mean, that gives you something to live for. Gives you, you know, that's your energy. That's your fuel, you know? And, um, and Jeff, I think isn't that isn't that the reason for all the story? I mean, you need an outlet, you need to share stories, your stories, other people's stories, so that they come together 
in a way of embracing more community. You know, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm it's, hearing it's not that. called it's not called dudes classic tales. It's called our classic tales. Okay, exactly. So, so if I'm doing something about uh, an evening in Quebec with my younger daughter Keely, when we were up there doing something, um, Kevin might chime in something from now. You know, something in Quebec or something like that. You know, yeah. and so you know we can make those kind of connections with classic tales where something I'm telling can be the springboard and other people adding stuff. Yeah. Which, by the way, I am coming to you from Quebec today, if you were wondering what the reference was to the Quebecois uh, and all of that. Uh, we could do this all over again in French, uh, should you want to, but... Uh, Mais we oui. to, uh, no, you don't <laughs> we'll French. stick to... It, it could, you could be le dude. La I'm forgetting what they call it in France, but something like that. Yeah, I've been to Quebec you know, a few times. You know, and Toronto. Uh, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time in Toronto. And yeah, but in uh, Quebec, um, you know, less time, but a fair amount of time. You know. and, I'm and from Jeff, upstate you, New York. Uh, and I lived in upstate New York, but the, you know, my father taught at Cornell and Ithaca, so you know, you know, um, this is not far away from where I Grew up, you know. And yeah. Jeff, as part of your as part of your classic tales of solutions, I know you are also very involved with Peace Jam. Is there is that does that segue into that, or tell us a little bit more about Peace Jam? And well, the that's a, that's a, well, Peace Jam, Don, get rid of Ivan Sobanovich. Um, they were in Kaliban. They they were there. That's where they lived, and um, you know the, the town there. And they were motivated by that by. And the guy's name is going to escape me now, Richard. I'm forgetting his name from Columbine. But they decided that, you know, what these kids needed, and these were, once again, 17, 18, 20, 21 year old male guys who were, you know, losing it, is they needed mentoring. And if they had mentoring, that might help them um, a lot when they were in these, you know, moments of their lives, times of their lives which they were very frustrated with. And so Don and Yvonne went, and they actually went and saw the Dalai Lama and suggested that maybe he could get involved. And he said, well, it's a great idea. Why don't you go see my friend Desmond down in South Africa? They went down and saw Desmond Tutu. And then there ended up being 18 Nobel laureates who were involved in Peace Jam. And they mentor kids around the clock all year long. Um, and, um, so, um, and this mentoring works and none of the kids who they've mentored have ever done anything by one after that, by the way, I and mean, we're talking about thousands. Okay. So mentoring can work. Okay. And love can work mm-hmm. kindness and helping people. And so the notion of peace jam basically was to mentor people. And, and, and when you see, you know, really recently, you know, Valdi and, you know, the, the thing in Buffalo the supermarket and you know more recently the thing at highland park you know these are all young guys who somehow think that the way they're going to make their mark is to shoot up a bunch of people and, and there are all tenders for that that are more satisfying for those individuals themselves okay and that's mm-hmm. kind of what the mentoring can lead to it and that's uh, that's um, you know you know that's that's my town highland park that's that's where i live um and it it is an awful, obviously it, it's devastating. But I, I didn't know that what you're saying is Highland that, Park. huh? I didn't know you were from Highland Park. Yeah, 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 that's where I live. That's where I live. And um, I mean, it must be um, to show to show someone who's on the brink a different, uh, uh, perhaps a way out. Of of doing this sort of thing, um, and to have the have the breadth of people who are no, Nobel laureates doing it, um, probably could have a real influence. Well, it does. It does. And, and the, the point is, you know, one doesn't have to have the Dalai Lama mentoring somebody to help somebody. Mentoring works, and 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 I think that needs to be more institutionalized or you know, practice much more often. 
particularly with these young men at risk. Now, I don't now, I don't, and I don't. I can only imagine it's quite different for young seventeen-year-old young women um, who aren't necessarily shooting stuff up uh, at all, but they may be doing great harm to themselves or or other things. And mentoring could help. Okay, even with yeah. uh, young women, they may not be out there killing people like the guys are. But um, so yeah, mentoring is is and 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 it also has to do with. It's more specific and individualized than, you know, going to school. <laughs> and then I say going to school, I go 11th grade, we can both go, or something like that. You know, you know, it's, 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 it can be more to the point and, and, and more bring out the best in people. Whereas sometimes certain things of traditional school don't. So mentoring is, is, is phenomenally important at this time in history. Yeah. Hmm. So the dude abides. Yeah. yeah Peacejam.org, by the way. It's peacejam, one word, dot org. Yeah, it's a terrific yeah. organization. And, and Jeff, yeah. what's, uh, are you, uh, what's your involvement? Are you mentoring as well? Yeah, I do it at, at various times with various people. Yeah. Yes. Good right. answer. Um, and I, I go to some of the Peace Jam events, um, you know, if, they're, if I'm free and they're nearby, obviously. Yeah, you know, this has been affected, you know, by COVID, but 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 um, prior to that, yeah. Yeah. You know, and even if you think about it, Jeff, all the behind the scenes works that you've done, I mean, we didn't even touch on Sundance uh, with Robert Redford Film Festival. And uh, but all the things you've done behind the scenes, just imagine that the motivation for the dude has created that further awareness, you know, for other things that you're doing. I mean, people come out to see you and enhance and in, in turn, they. Uh, are involved in Peace Jam. I mean, these are all things that are helping to motivate that continued interest, you know? Yeah, it's no, I, I, did a thing at, I did a thing at Red Rocks with the Denver Film Festival. They're showing Lebowski, and I was the guest. But I brought Don and Yvonne on stage with, you know, I don't know, 15,000 people, whatever it is, I guess the capacity there. It's a lot, 10,000, 10, 10,000. And, you know, they talked about Peace Jam even right there. You know, it's close to their hometown, but still. Anyhow, the yeah, point is, yes, I can I can use that dude stuff to open doors to other things for other people. Yes, and I do. Mm-hmm. That's and a, that's a, uh, yeah. are they um, are they aware that you were a delinquent Boy Scout uh, when you were doing it? And did that <laughs> Cub Scout? Was the, Kevin, you're better for it. Read it again. Cub, Cub Scout. It was a Cub, Cub Scout. You're a Cub Scout. Yes. Well, yeah. The, no, no. We I was a Cub Scout, and we went to a Cub Scout meeting. This is in Cuga Heights, Arch, Ithaca, New York, where a lot of the, you know, professor types and other types lived. And we went to the den meeting, and there was a barn fire, about two hundred yards down the road. Huge barn fire, and so, and of course, the volunteer firemen are understaffed and all that. So all the Cubs wanted to go help, you know, pull hoses and stuff like that. And the den mother said, "You can't do that." And we said. Well, you're going to stop us from doing, you know, trying to stop a barn fire in the neighborhood burning down. So we all just left and we were all thrown out of Cub Scouts for that. But we ended up doing building hoses and help barn fire out and save the field and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that was my end of uh, Cub Scouts right there for doing the right but thing. But that was the big, that was the big, that was the beginning of the rest of your life. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. I'm going back <laughs> after that. Jeff, yeah. Kevin, um, and I and our viewers want to know. Why do you believe in people? Because I've seen so many great, wonderful examples of people doing so many wonderful things, inspiring others and themselves. And I just believe it's in us. You know, it's, you know, God created whatever you want us to call it to have abilities that are amazing. and. And, you know, they're there to be used and, and to do things with and to, you know, live life to its fullest. And so that's kind of what I, you know, believe and anything we can all do to come together to, to make that possible in unbelievably challenging times right now. I mean, we're at a time of every system is changing, okay, or not changing. But economic systems, environmental things, communication, you name it, it's education, it's, you know, it's going to go, it's going through fundamental change. So the question is going to be, 
what's going to come out on the other side systemically? Is it going to be better, the same, worse, et cetera, you know, for the environment, for example, on various aspects that relate to the environment and climate change? You know, so that's kind of, you know, where I think it's important for us all to be involved. But I believe in people because every day, look, you could pick up any local news station, Kevin, and you know this from your NBC experience, um, not just local, nationally, but virtually every news station ends the day with some kind of example on CNN or MSNBC or Fox, it doesn't matter, of somebody or some people somewhere doing something wonderful and 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 changing their their world and so that's kind of what it's all about and um and and we have no time to waste on that you know at all and so you know but all this can be exhilarating and fun and solutionating a word made up by gb hajim h a g i m <laughs> who's in hawaii by the way out of san diego diver guy who trained all these kids um, who were formerly in the pineapple and kind of fruit business that moved out of Hawaii um, to the Philippines and places. So he trained tons of young kids how to be filmmakers. I mean, a lot of them. And so, GB, but he came up with this word, solutioning, which I think is pretty cool word. Anyhow, so there you go. Yeah, you can check out his Instagram, GB Hajim. So, yeah. So you're not... Uh, I, you're not intimidated by this changing world? Every day, in every way, of course. Oh. Well, we are. It's, it's very, very challenging. And, and I guess the thing, one of the things that we found, and you found, no doubt, is, is you know, to get through it, you need allies. I'm, there are strong people who can do it all along, but it certainly helps to have friends and colleagues. and allies in these tough times as you two know yourself it's not the amy show or the kevin show it's the amy and kevin show okay so um you know um so but yeah, people really really need allies to get through this tough world right now it's tough yeah the dude show the dude show dude abide yeah. the grateful dude abides well thanks for abiding yes, with yeah. us for half an hour anytime anytime well, Kevin, he has a lot going on, doesn't he? Yeah, and I'm still taken aback by the fact that there actually is a guy that they actually made the dude after. And I still believe that the dude in the center of his heart was a good man. And it sort of sounds like Jeff really is the dude because that's the impression one takes away from talking to him. Absolutely. The dude abides. So does Kevin and Amy. 